June 2025, Airbus reaches a milestone. The A350-900 surpasses 1,000 orders. 1,000 firm commitments from airlines around the world. But here's what makes this remarkable. The Boeing 777 has been flying since 1995, 30 years of proven performance. Over 500 aircraft currently in service. The Boeing 787 Dreamliner entered service in 2011, revolutionized composite construction, changed what airlines expected from widebody jets. Both aircraft dominated long-haul aviation for decades. So how did the A350, which only entered service in 2015, become the aircraft every airline now wants? Why is Turkish Airlines ordering 105 A350s? Why did Emirates, Boeing's most loyal customer, order 50 A350s? Why is Korean Air, Cathay Pacific, Singapore Airlines, all betting their futures on this aircraft? Because something fundamental shifted. The A350 isn't just competing with the 787 and 777 anymore. It's replacing them. Let's start with the data. As of November 2025, the Airbus A350 family has 1,493 firm orders from 65 customers worldwide. Turkish Airlines leads with 110 on order. Emirates has 50. Singapore Airlines, 63 in service with more coming. Qatar Airways, 58 delivered. Cathay Pacific, 46 in their fleet. 686 A350s have been delivered. Now compare that to Boeing's widebody programs. The Boeing 787 has delivered over 1,200 aircraft since 2011. Still strong, still selling. But the 777? Production of the 777-300ER ended in 2024. The last passenger variant rolled off the line. No more orders. No more deliveries. Why would Boeing stop building one of the most successful widebodies ever made? Because the 777X, Boeing's replacement, was supposed to enter service in 2020. It's now 2025. The 777X still hasn't been certified. First delivery delayed until 2027 at the earliest. That's seven years behind schedule. Airlines that ordered the 777X in 2013 are still waiting. Lufthansa, Emirates, Qatar Airways, Singapore Airlines, British Airways. They were promised aircraft in 2020. They're now told, maybe 2027. What do airlines do when they need widebody jets now and Boeing can't deliver? They order A350s. Here's where the story gets interesting. The Boeing 777X isn't just delayed. It's stuck in certification hell. August 2024, Boeing discovers cracks in the thrust link. The structure connecting engines to wings. Flight testing stops for five months. January 2025, flight testing resumes. Progress is slow. The FAA is watching every move. October 2025, Boeing announces another delay. First delivery now targeted for 2027. Maybe. Boeing has taken $4.9 billion in charges related to 777X delays. Emirates, the largest 777X customer with 270 aircraft on order, is frustrated. Lufthansa converted 14 firm orders into options. Singapore Airlines keeps hedging with more 787s. The widebody market hates uncertainty. When airlines plan fleet renewal, they need delivery dates they can trust, routes to schedule, pilot training to organize, maintenance contracts to negotiate. Boeing can't give them certainty. Airbus can. The A350 is certified, in production, delivering six aircraft per month as of late 2025. Airbus plans to ramp up to 12 aircraft per month by 2028. Airlines that can't wait for the 777X are ordering A350s instead. In 2024, Airbus won 142 A350 orders. Through October 2025, 111 more orders came in. That's 253 A350 orders in less than two years. Meanwhile, the 777X sits at 565 total orders accumulated over 12 years, with zero deliveries. The momentum has shifted. But Boeing's problems alone don't explain why airlines are choosing the A350. The A350 solves problems airlines didn't even know they had. Let's talk about capacity flexibility. The A350-900 carries 300 to 350 passengers, depending on configuration. The A350-1000 carries 350 to 410 passengers. 
That range covers almost every long-haul mission airlines operate. Too thin for an A350-1000? Use the A350-900. Too thick for a 787? Deploy the A350-1000. Need something between a 777 and a 787? The A350-900 is perfect. Airlines love this flexibility. One aircraft family. Common pilot type rating. Seamless fleet management. Range is even better. The A350-900 flies 8,100 nautical miles. That's 15,000 kilometers. From Singapore to New York. Non-stop. From Dubai to San Francisco. Non-stop. From London to Perth, Australia. Non-stop. The A350-1000 flies 8,700 nautical miles. 16,100 kilometers. That's enough for Auckland to Doha. Or Sydney to London via Singapore with minimal fuel stops. But here's the kicker. The A350 burns 25% less fuel than the aircraft it replaces. Compare the A350-900 to an aging Airbus A350-600 or Boeing 777-300ER. Same capacity. Same routes but massively lower fuel burn. For airlines operating hundreds of long-haul flights daily, that's tens of millions of dollars saved annually. And then Airbus did something brilliant. They launched the A350F freighter. The first deliveries are scheduled for late 2027. Airbus already has over 70 firm orders. Why does this matter? Because Boeing owns the wide-body freighter market. The 777F has been the gold standard for decades. Over 100 deliveries unmatched payload capacity. But, production of the 777F ends in 2027. New emissions regulations. The aircraft won't comply. Boeing's replacement? The 777-8F. A freighter version of the 777X. First delivery? 2028, maybe. That creates a gap. Airlines need freighters now. FedEx. UPS. Qatar Airways Cargo. Lufthansa Cargo. They can't wait until 2028 for aircraft Boeing might deliver. So they're ordering A350Fs. The A350F carries 109 tons of cargo over 4,700 nautical miles. That's 8,700 kilometers. Slightly less than the 777F, but close enough for most routes. And it's available years earlier. Airbus sales chief Benoit de Saint-Exupéry told reporters, one of our objectives for 2025 is to penetrate the big freight carriers in the U.S. Translation, Airbus is going after FedEx and UPS, Boeing's most loyal cargo customers. And it's working. Starlux Airlines ordered 10 A350Fs in December 2024. Air Lease Corporation ordered more. Lesser appetite is strong. The A350 isn't just winning the passenger market anymore. It's taking the cargo market too. So why is the A350 winning? Because airlines don't want the biggest aircraft. They want the right aircraft. The 777 will carry 426 passengers. Massive capacity. Perfect for ultra-high demand routes like Dubai to London or Singapore to Sydney. But most long-haul routes don't need 426 seats. They need 300 or 350. Enough capacity to be profitable without gambling on filling a giant jet every single day. The A350-900 hits that sweet spot perfectly. Then there's operational costs. The A350 is built with 53% composite materials by weight. Lighter, stronger, less maintenance. The Rolls-Royce Trent XWB engines are some of the most fuel-efficient turbofans ever built. Dispatch reliability, 99.5%. That means 99.5% of A350 flights depart on time without technical issues. That's exceptional for a wide-body aircraft, especially one that's only been flying since 2015. Compare that to the 787's early years. Battery fires, groundings, structural issues. The A350, rock solid from day one. Airlines notice, passengers notice, and here's something nobody talks about. The A350's cabin is wider than the 787. Not by much, but enough to matter. Nine abreast seating in economy feels more spacious than the 787's eight or nine abreast layout. Business class suites have more room. Overhead bins are bigger. It's not revolutionary, but it's better. Small advantages add up. Over thousands of flights, millions of passengers. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room. What about the Boeing 787? The 787 Dreamliner is still selling, still delivering, 
over 1,200 in service, backlog of 780 orders. So why is the A350 winning? Because the 787 can't do everything airlines need. The 787-8 carries 242 to 290 passengers and flies 7,350 nautical miles. The 787-9 carries 290 passengers and flies 7,635 nautical miles. The 787-10 carries 330 passengers but only flies 6,430 nautical miles. Notice the problem? The 787-10 has great capacity but limited range. You can't fly nonstop from London to Perth or Dubai to Los Angeles. The 787-9 has great range but limited capacity. You're leaving revenue on the table if demand is high. The A350-900 does both. 350 passengers and 8,100 nautical miles. That's the difference. Airlines replacing aging 777-300ER need an aircraft that matches capacity and range. The 787 doesn't. The A350 does. So here's where we are. The 777X won't arrive until 2027. Maybe later. Boeing's widebody production is stuck. The 787 is strong, but limited. Great for certain missions. Not enough for airlines replacing 777s. The A350 is available, proven, and flexible. It covers every gap in the widebody market. Airbus delivered 57 A350s in 2024. They're targeting 12 aircraft per month by 2028. That's 144 deliveries annually. At that pace, Airbus will deliver over 1,000 A350s by 2030. Boeing's widebody programs can't match that. The 777X might deliver 20 to 30 aircraft in 2027. If certification goes perfectly, the 787, 5 to 6 per month, strong, but not enough to offset A350 momentum. Airlines are making long-term bets. Turkish Airlines ordered 105 A350s. Emirates ordered 50. Korean Air ordered 33. Japan Airlines keeps adding more. These aren't small commitments. These are airlines betting their entire long-haul futures on one aircraft family. And they're betting on Airbus. So why is the A350 becoming the default long-haul jet? Because it's the only aircraft that checks every box. Range. Capacity. Fuel efficiency. Operational reliability. Delivery certainty. Freighter option. The 777X might be bigger. The 787 might be lighter, but the A350 is available. And in aviation, availability wins. Airlines can't wait seven years for aircraft that might arrive. They need jets delivering passengers and cargo right now. Airbus gives them that. Boeing doesn't. The A350 isn't the most revolutionary aircraft ever built. It's not the biggest. It's not the fastest. But it's the best all-around long-haul jet flying today. And that's why, from Singapore to Istanbul, from Tokyo to Dubai, from New York to Sydney. The A350 is becoming the aircraft every airline orders. Not because it's perfect, because it's right.